Good morning. We want to welcome you to worship this morning. We hope that God blesses you as we seek to worship and give praise to God wherever we are. We hope you will download the bulletin for a list of activities and things that are going on in the life of our community. A couple of things that we do want to lift up this morning is, is that we are having our drive through communion uh, at 1.30 this afternoon. It'll be from 1.30 to 3 o'clock, and we invite you to come and drive through on the entrance facing the baseball park. Um, we'll pray with you and offer you the communion elements, and I think it will be a time of, of blessing and just remembering what Christ has done for us. Also at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we're having a relaunch team uh, meeting, a relaunch and administrative council meeting. Uh, it'll start at four o'clock, like I said, and we want to invite everyone who is on the administrative council or the relaunch team to join us. Uh, we'll be sending out or resending that link for everyone. Uh, and it's just kind of a time for us to get ready for next week, because beginning next week, July 12th, we will be relaunching and resuming in-person worship. Um, it'll start at 1030. Uh, hopefully everyone has received uh, the guidelines about wearing masks and social distancing and all of those things uh, to help protect everyone. But I hope you'll come and be a part of that. If you uh, have uh, any struggles or if you're at risk or maybe more vulnerable, we want to encourage you to continue to worship with us uh, online. But if you are able, we encourage you to come and worship uh, with us next week at 1030. Those are all of the announcements that I want to lift up this morning. But I just invite us to bow our heads for prayer. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And Lord, we just declare your goodness today. Lord, we ask that you would be with us in the midst of worship. Lord, that you would prepare our hearts and our minds to receive whatever you would give to us or speak to us today. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Intentions are told. I 
I wonder why I miss everyone and I still don't call I wonder why I can't run that fast in my dreams Although I guess if I knew tomorrow I guess I wouldn't need faith I guess if I never fell I guess I wouldn't need grace I guess if I knew his plans I guess he wouldn't be God God, God So maybe I don't know Maybe I don't know. 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 But maybe that's okay. 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 Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's okay. This morning we are continuing in our sermon series called The Summer of Psalms. We're looking at psalms that uh, have blessed us, uh, psalms of thanksgiving, psalms of lament, psalms that touch our hearts and help us in the midst of times of both goodness and of temptation and trial. This morning we are continuing that series by looking at Psalm 46. So I invite you now to hear these words. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. See what desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, we are entering into a time of prayer, lifting up our world, our nation, and our community. Um, we want to especially on this 4th of July weekend, lift up our country and our servicemen and women and those who are serving, uh, serving us in that way. Uh, and we also wanna lift up those in our community that are in need of prayer. Wanna to continue to lift up the Garden Hire family and, and Kara. Uh, on the death of her father, Pop Williams, and praying for them and for their whole family. Uh, we want to also lift up the Allen family, who is from Prairie Grove, who suffered a house fire this past week, and be praying for them. We also want to lift up Vicki Kraft, who's also a member of our extended community here in Farmington, one of the teachers at the school who lost her son this week. And so be praying for her and be praying for all those who are on our prayer list. 
I invite you to bow your heads with me. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our nation and our country. We thank you for the freedoms and the liberties that we have to worship you. We're mindful of brothers and sisters around the world who don't have that same freedom. And Lord, we pray for them. We pray for your, for your power to touch them and minister to them. Help them to have fearless spirits as they seek to worship and give you praise. Lord, we ask that you would be with all of us here in our country. Help us to seek you and to seek peace and justice and just your goodness each and every day. Lord, we lift up those who are in our community who are on our hearts and our minds. We pray for those who are grieving losses, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would minister to them. Lord, we pray for those who have um, suffered uh, losses through fires or through other ways. And, and Lord, we just pray that you would comfort them and give them peace. Lord, we also ask that you would be with our community. Lord, that you would help us to find ways of being your hands and feet. We pray for other brothers and sisters in Christ who are worshiping today. We pray that you would bless their gatherings. And Lord, we pray that you would bless us. Help us to find ways of loving and serving others. Lord, we continue to lift up our nation as it struggles with the coronavirus. Lord, we pray for those who've been affected and who those who, who need healing. We pray for doctors, nurses, and support personnel at the hospitals, chaplains, social workers, nurses, aides, everyone who, uh, who ministers and serves in that way. Lord, we pray for them. We pray that you would be with them. Lord, we pray that you would help us to just remember your grace and your mercy and that you are our Lord and our King. And Lord, we ask all of this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we seek to understand this passage better, I invite you to bow your heads as we, um, as we pray for illumination. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we ask that you would guide our hearts and our minds. Help us to understand this scripture that you have given us better. Help us to know you and to grow in our faith. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a story that is told about a monastery that is in Portugal. And the monastery is built on a mountain, some 3,000 feet up in the air. And it's very remote. It's hard to get to. In fact, the only way for others beyond the monks to get to this monastery is a large metal bucket um, that people can actually fit in. And they lower the bucket down on a rope and the people get in and they're carried to the monastery. And one day, a, an American tourist came to visit this monastery and the bucket was lowered and there was a monk there that was in the bucket with the tourist. And the tourist began to be brought up to this monastery. And as he looked around, he began to notice how high he was. He also began to notice how rickety the bucket was and how frayed the rope looked. And he began to be afraid. And so in order to uh, assuage his fears, he asked the monk, how often do you change this rope? And the monk looked at him and said, whenever it breaks. Now, a lot of us would not be comfortable with that type of security. A lot of us would be uncomfortable with anything that looks haphazard or insecure. In fact, I would wager that many of us have built our lives around those things that we think will give us peace, that those things that we think will bring us security. If we have a stable job, if we own our home, if we have the right set of, of circumstances and resources, 
then we'll be okay. We'll be secure. And yet, as Christians, we have a deeper hope. We have a stronger security. And this passage today, Psalm 46, offers a glimpse of that security. In fact, verse, uh, Psalms 46, 47, and 48 are all about living a life of faith having a secure and a firm foundation in a living faith. And that faith, that security, that trust, that hope is found in a relationship with God. God who is not only um, the creator of the universe, he's the king over all of the earth. And as we grow in that relationship, we can have hope that God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Uh, in this psalm, verses 1 through 3, give that declaration. The psalmist is proclaiming loudly, boldly, confidently, fearlessly that God is God. God is the true help in times of trouble. God is the source of security. In fact, to underscore that point, the psalmist gives a description of a dire situation, a situation in which the very creation that God created is uncreating itself. The land falls back into the oceans. The waters become a chaos and a, 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 an abyss like that at the beginning of, of Genesis. But yet, even in the midst of this situation that the psalmist imagines, still the psalmist declares he will have hope and trust in God. That no matter what happens, his faith and his hope and his security will not be shaken. In verses 4 through 7, the psalmist describes the city of God, talks about how the city of God is a place of security and peace, a place of, of gladness. It talks about how the reason for this security is, it's not something that's man-made, it's not something that's a part of the natural world, that Jerusalem, the city of God, is secure because it's the place where the temple of God is. And the temple of God is the place of God's presence. Especially in the Old Testament, it's important for us to remember that the temple was the place where the, the presence, the, the Shekinah glory of God dwelt. Now, God's presence is over all the earth, but there was a special manifestation at the temple. And that's why it was important for those who were faithful Jewish people to go and to worship there and worship in the presence of of God. And not only that, but in this passage, it talks about in verse 4 a river that it makes glad the city of our God. Now, Jerusalem was not built on any, um, any natural river. Unlike many other cities around the world who were built around large rivers or large bodies of water, uh, Jerusalem does not have those natural features. But what the psalmist is saying is, is that the presence of God, the presence of the Lord is a refreshing stream of living water that brings renewal, that brings hope, that refreshes God's people. And so that is what he trusts in. That's what he has security in. In verses 8 through 11, it presents a future vision of the kingdom of God. The kingdom is both present and not yet fully realized. The psalmist that believes that the, the kingdoms and the nations of this world will come to the glory, glorify and give praise to God, that though the kingdoms of this world practice violence and practice injustice, there is a true kingdom, a kingdom that we can be a part of and a true king who is the refuge and rock and fortress of his people. So what does this mean for us this morning? 
How can we place our hope and our trust in this security? What can this passage teach us about that? Well, the first thing is, is that security is not the absence of trouble. Now, Scripture is very clear that just because you are a person of faith, just because you have hope in the Lord does not mean that your life is going to be free from trouble. As you look at the Old Testament witness, as you look at the life of Paul and the other uh, disciples and followers of Jesus, as you look at Jesus's life, it was one where there was trouble and where there was strife. And yet at, in the midst of that, God's presence was there. God had not left the building that God was and is with us. In fact, sometimes even our faith itself can be a source of trouble. But even in the midst of that, it's worth, worth it because we worship the God of spirit and truth and goodness and power. When we have times of trouble, it's important for us to realize that and to remember that our hope is not in the things of this world. We may lose those things that we think our security is based around tomorrow. And yet, if we still have the Lord, if we still are, have our relationship with God, then that is where our ultimate hope and, and joy lie. The second point that I want to make is that the presence of God is in and around the people of faith. It's a source of protection and hope for the community. We are God's people. We are called the sheep of his pasture. Jesus says he is the good shepherd who looks after the sheep. And so we can trust in God. We can trust in that goodness and that hope that we profess. We can also fully access and have, uh, have connection to God, connection to that security and hope by following the psalmist's command to be still and know that God is God. There are different kinds of silence. There are different ways of being still. Writer Paul Goodman says this, he says, not speaking and speaking are both human ways of being in the world. And there are kinds and grades of each. There's the dumb silence of slumber or apathy, the sober silence that goes with a solemn animal face, the fertile silence of awareness, pasturing the soul, whence emerges new thoughts, the alive silence of alert perception, ready to say this, this, the musical silence that accompanies absorbed activity, the silence of listening to another speak, catching the drift and helping them to become clear, the noisy silence of resentment and self-recrimination, loud and subvocal speech, but sullen to say it, baffled silence, the silence of peaceful accord with other persons or with communion with the cosmos. Now the type of silence that the psalmist is imagining, the psalmist is declaring when he says, be still and know that I am God, is the type that brings awareness, the type that pastures the soul and brings peaceful communion and accord, not merely with other people, although that's definitely part of it, and not merely with the cosmos, but communion and accord with the creator, the king of the universe. And so as we take times to be still and know that God is God, God will come to us. God will fill us. God will help us to understand that God's presence is with us. And we can rest in God's assurance and protection and find strength in times of trouble by relying and trusting in God's spirit and God's presence. Third point is, is that God's kingdom is ultimate and eternal. God's mighty acts will one day be known across the nations. We believe that every tongue and tribe and nation will da bow down before Jesus and declare him the king. It's already being made known more and more through missions and evangelism and sharing the good news across the face of the earth about what Christ has done, what God has done for creation and how he wants to bless the world. 
but it's also one day a, a promise and a hope that every tongue will confess and every knee will bow down and declare him Lord. The kingdom of God is inevitable and unshakable. It is God reigning where what God wills to be done is done in the life of his people and in the life of those who follow him. It's the kingdom of peace where God's people turn their swords into plowshare, plowshares and where war is practiced no more. It's marvelous. It's beautiful. It's a source of hope for the future and for each generation. It's the true source of security in today's world where there is so much trouble where there is so much strife, where it seems like brother is against brother, conflict after conflict, we can have hope in this future. The Psalm reminds me of what writer and professor William Bryan, what James Bryan Smith said. And, and this is a person uh, I shared last week, another quote from James Bryan Smith. And, and this one I've shared before, but I love it. it. It's a source that I come back to again and again uh, when I'm needing that security, when I'm needing that hope. He says this, you are one in whom Christ, Christ dwells and delights. You live in the strong and unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are you. Do we believe that this morning? Do we really profess that in the way that we live and interact with others? Do we believe that the kingdom of God is unshakable, inevitable and coming soon? Or do we place our trust and our hope in things that are present instead of looking to things above? What I want to invite us this morning is to take time this week to open our hearts and to be still and know that he is God. And we can do that in several ways. We can continue to read over the Psalms. We can journal some of our favorite passages of scripture and write it out as a prayer to our Lord. We can practice times of silence where instead of talking at God, which is important, talking to God is definitely important, but we can be still and let God talk to us. We can ask for that still small voice to speak into our hearts and into our lives. And we can also come this afternoon and participate in Holy Communion. We can remember all that Christ has done for us that Christ gave his life as a ransom and as an offering for our sins so that we might be reconciled with God and that we can be God's adopted sons and daughters. And we have that faith, we have that hope, we have that trust that that is where our ultimate security lies. I pray this morning that you would believe that, that you would receive that and that you would know that God is with us. I invite us to bow our heads this morning. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we are so thankful for this time of worship. Lord, we claim the promises that you give us, that we live in your unshakable kingdom, that we are your beloved children, that we can be still and know that you are God. Lord, forgive us for the times where we place our security in other things besides you. Help our hearts and our souls and our lives and our very being Hold firmly to you, our rock and our refuge. And Lord, as we continue in worship, we pray that you would just bless us and be with us and watch over us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. It's who I am. It's who I am. 
It's who I am And I've seen many searching for answers Far and wide But I know we're all searching for answers Only you provide because you know what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. So undeniable life I can hardly speak peace So unexplainable life I can hardly think as you call me And deeper still as you call me And deeper still still in love, 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 love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday.